How much does Tesla make in net profit? Take a wild guess. If you're less than 20%, you're a fool. You don't know what you're talking about. That's the starting point. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Paul R. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, Dan Ives conducted a new survey interviewing 500 consumers who are ready to buy an EV in 2023. They found 76% of Chinese consumers are considering buying a Tesla this year. The closest competitor was BYD in second place. He added some commentary saying that the Tesla price cuts in China are already paying huge dividends for Tesla and that the China story looks back on track based on that EV survey. Now, in my opinion, it was never really off track to begin with. So in summary from Dan Ives, who's been a bit more negative on Tesla over the past few weeks is saying that these price cuts have been a home run success out of the gates. More importantly though, the Wall Street estimates for Tesla's 2023 earnings expectations, the bar has been lowered. Now it sits at $4.80, down from $5.50 late last year. So plugging that Wall Street estimate in, given Tesla's current stock price as of recording right now, that would give Tesla a forward price to earnings ratio of about 27. And from a gap perspective, if you add up Q1 through Q3, so far Tesla is at $2.55 per share. So if you just throw in $1.20 for Q4, that would give us a current PE for 2022 of about 35. Look, I've been saying now for months that I think 2023 could be a very challenging year with interest rates higher and families being a lot more conservative, not knowing what's going to happen with jobs and the future economy. However, if Tesla's EPS for 2022 does end up in the $3.75 range, this right here would imply a 28% earnings growth for 2023, which we know that Tesla can absolutely surpass. Especially as Tesla's market share continues to grow with the price cuts, more people buy FSD and subscribe to it. And of course, the Lathrop facility is probably the biggest question that I have about Tesla and we'll get a lot more information over the next six months. We already know the demand is there for the next two years. So really the only question is, can they get enough semiconductors for the mega packs and how fast can they make them? And of course, what will the margins be? But in the back half of this year, that could be the time where we finally start to see Tesla energy really adding meaningful contributions to Tesla's bottom line and EPS numbers. Jeff on Twitter has been doing some really good work and I wanna highlight another one of the charts that he shared. This is simple. It's just showing us the total likes on tweets by Tesla in this blue line that has seen a very big spike starting toward the end of November last year compared to the likes for other automakers that are these gray lines that are essentially forming the x-axis of this chart. And no, it's not just that Tesla has had a few viral tweets. If you look at the tweet volume by month, as you can see, starting in December, the volume has absolutely ramped up. This really matters because it's almost a free way for Tesla to seriously increase its reach on social media and they're doing it by actually putting out some educational content which we all know the public really needs. If you stick around to the end of today's video, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. From Reuters, Tesla earned $15,600 in gross profit per vehicle in the third quarter of last year, twice as much as VW, four times as much as Toyota, and five times more than Ford. A lot of people have been sharing this chart that shows us gross profit per vehicle and the difference between Q4 of 2020 and the improvements made up to Q3 of 2022. So Tesla clearly leading the way with that figure we just mentioned. And BYD in second at 14.9 thousand. Remember though, this is gross profit per vehicle. So usually this is basically just revenue minus cost of goods sold. But then look at the story when we take a look at net profit per vehicle, which is usually just then removing all of the fixed costs, whether it's rent for the factory or utilities, things of that nature. Tesla coming in at $9,500 in net profit per vehicle. The closest on this list would be VW at about 3,000 per vehicle. Not only that, but look at the improvement Tesla made over just the last two years, going from about 1.5 thousand to 9.5 thousand. It's really simple. Tesla is just in a league of its own and one day eventually more people will understand that. We got some new comments from a Tencent executive and if you didn't know, back in 2018, Tencent invested about a 5% stake in Tesla that was worth about 
$1.8 billion. And it was at that time when Tesla's future was not nearly as sure as it is today. He said, Tesla will keep blowing our minds with technology even while Elon may be distracted with Twitter. And always an important point to remember and something that I do really believe, even though it may not sound like it in every single video, there will be several competitors, but that will be really good for the planet. The narrative really should not be EV versus EV, but it needs to be EVs versus ICE. Monroe Live put out a new video today where Sandy went on a bit of a rant and he was talking about Tesla's margins and it was definitely very entertaining. I wanna cover a few things. I think most of us here know and would agree that Monroe really is probably the best company on the planet when it comes to determining the actual input costs for these vehicles because they break it down by every single component and actually price it out and that's how they sell their reports for so much money. So strictly when it comes to the price of Tesla's vehicle and the actual cost for all of the components that goes into making the vehicle, they have calculated gross margins in the neighborhood of 31 and 33% for the Model 3 back in 2018 pre-heat pump and the 2022 Model Y respectively. However, these numbers do not include things like full self-driving and other software upgrades that are basically clear profit, meaning 100% margin. In the video, Sandy said Tesla will annihilate their competition because their cars are cheaper than anybody else can make them. How is anybody going to be able to compete with that? They said Tesla is getting aluminum cheaper than everybody else. Tesla made deals with aluminum companies a while back and Tesla uses a special aluminum with custom alloys. So what I'm gonna give you are the conservative numbers we have right now, but I know, I absolutely flat out know that Tesla is probably looking at 40% gross profit. I don't know where they hide it or how they do what they do, but I can tell you right now, I work for several different big automotive companies in Europe, in Japan, and here in the United States. And I can tell you what, nobody can do that. Nobody, absolutely nobody. The ID4 now is $4,000 more expensive than a Model Y. Who in the is gonna buy the Model Y, or sorry, who's gonna buy an ID4 if I can get a Model Y with the best charging systems on the planet, with all the right things going for it, with the fact that they're probably gonna beat everybody to full self-driving eventually. Anyway, I'm, I'm starting to rattle on. Why don't you take over? They went on to say that Ford is moving faster than any other legacy OEM when it comes to transitioning to electric vehicles and that they should definitely be a survivor. Sandy said Tesla will clobber everybody except for the Chinese and that Tesla is rolling off a new car off the line every 40 seconds. No one else has that. Most other companies are around 60 seconds. The Monroe team has raised about 15% of the funds they need to have enough money to buy the Tesla Semi for a teardown. And when it comes to the Cybertruck, they made guesses of about 35% gross profits, but of course, this is just a guess because the vehicle isn't even being made yet. In Sandy, <clears throat> dealerships in the state of Michigan, what are some of the richest uh, private companies? Not in? some of the, the richest. The richest companies in, in Michigan are typically dealership networks. That's correct. Where did they get all of those hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe near billions of dollars, if they're a large conglomerate? It's from pulling that, that cash right. off of the price of the vehicle right. for the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Exactly. So of course the full video will be linked below. Greg on Twitter did some nice due diligence and saw that the Cybertruck casting molds may be arriving in Giga Austin over the next few days. These from a company ZDM. And here's just a quick zoom in. The importer, Tesla Texas Gigafactory and some of these molds may have already arrived. Greg also shared this screenshot showing some of the gross weights for these molds. Now, kilograms to pounds is multiplying by 2.2. So if you take this one, 22,000 times 2.2, we're talking in the neighborhood of 45,000 pounds. And then with these figures, I'm wondering if we're missing a decimal point in here somewhere, because if you do the math on this one, 105,000 kilograms, we're talking 215,000 pounds, which is basically more than the weight of the average house. Now, I believe these are what you actually inject the molten aluminum into to then actually start forming the gigacast and the underbody. Greg is pretty far down the rabbit hole here. I'll include a link to his Twitter below if you wanna keep up with the great work that he's been doing. 
We don't get a ton of information here, but it sounds like at Fremont, Tesla will begin to implement some automated quality control, which I'm sure will get a ton of mixed feedback. But a new permit submitted says they're ready to install two new robots to inspect fascia quality. Fascia just refers to the vehicle dashboard, meaning this could be for interior quality control, and it's just an automatic inspection system. In what could be related to that, Tesla has a job posting for a quality inspection engineer in San Diego, California for the Vision Automation team looking for an engineer to expand the capabilities of our automated defect detection systems. This Vision Automation team is working on the Sexy Models, Cybertruck, Cell Production, RoboTaxis, Optimus, and New Factories. A Reddit user shared a screenshot that there may be some 4680 Model Ys back in stock. This was for local delivery in San Diego. I checked about four different zip codes myself and there were none available in those, so may be worth a look if you're looking. Here's an interesting one, GM investing about $1 billion and most of it is going to go for V8 engine production. And it feels like a little toss in more for marketing, but they are saying some of the money will be for EV components too. They said their commitment is still to an all electric future, but we know that has a horizon and between here and there, there are a lot of internal combustion engine customers we don't want to lose. A majority of the investment, $579 million, will go toward V8 gas engines. This right here is the main problem for legacy OEMs. They have to do this tightrope walk of catering to their current customers and their highest profit vehicles and shifting over to EVs where they're losing money. These big engine performance vehicles like Cadillac and Chevy are the most profitable vehicles for GM. Not an inspiring quote here for EV fans. They said, is electric going to come tomorrow? Is it 10 years away? You still need the internal combustion until the technology is perfected for the EVs. Problem is the technology is never going to be perfected. Just look at Tesla. They're always continuing to iterate and make changes. And the technology is clearly good enough to make really good EVs that people want to buy. It's just most companies haven't cracked the code yet. So a lot of people complaining about Elon spending time at Twitter, but you have these legacy OEMs who literally have their entire business model split in two between electric vehicle powertrains and ICE. How do you think that's going to work out? This article from Reuters had nothing new to offer us other than this blurb from Kathy Wood, who said, we are as bullish about Tesla as we have ever been. Ditto. And I'll send you guys off into the weekend with some clips from Tesla's most recent educational video, the type of content I've been wanting to see from Tesla for a long time. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. The easiest way to think about a heat pump is like an air conditioner in reverse. An air conditioning system takes heat out of your house and pumps it to the outside environment, which is hotter a heat pump harvesting heat when it's cold outside and pushing an engine to the cabin of the car. You know, the basis of it is just around like using the energy you have to make the vehicle more efficient. So heat pumps are not a new concept, but a lot of times when someone implements a heat pump system, they do that by adding a lot of components. And we wanted to implement the benefits of a heat pump system, but at the same time reduce the complexity. So the idea we came up with, we're calling it the super manifold. Um, and it's basically a two layer PCB assembly. This uh, section in the front, is all of the refrigerant channels that would normally be separate components and separate tubes all connecting things together. We did a similar thing with the coolant components. So we have a, a layer in the back that's all of the coolant channels all plumbed together. This would normally be 15, 20 separate components in a car and we've made it into one assembly that's all together.